hello guys and ooh. hello guys and welcome to my channel you join me in a unique location this here is my house I've recently um, purchased my first property and I've been doing renovations on it for the last few weeks and I thought instead of doing this stuff and not showing you a lot I can make a video on it and it can be a bit of the behind the scenes so right now I am in my kitchen and I'm about to lay down some underfloor heating as well as some tiled flooring. By no means am I a professional, pure DIY, doing this myself, trying to save some money. So I've spent the last two days ripping up the worst, stickiest type of tar glue off of my old tiles. And now I'm about to, another firework. And now I'm about to clean up the remainder of the adhesive with a cleaner and then start to um, lay down my flooring state of the floor so I've ripped it all up and I've put down some anti sticky kind of degreaser and I just need to scrape all of this surface clean ready for the next step so to my regular viewers don't you worry I still make pipe welding videos this here is just like bonus content so if this isn't anything you're interested in, you can skip and watch the next video. So this is what it looks like day two. Some of the parts I put too much glue down is green, but for the most part, it is nice and clean. I can grab my bucket. I have marked on the bucket two liters of water, and I'm gonna mix that with half a bag of the floor leveler, and I'm gonna do it in halves to start off with. So at this point here, I've done as much research as I could. I knew I had to put down some floor leveling compound in order to get a nice base for my tiles. What you previously witnessed was me going through two, nearly two days of ripping up what I later learned was asbestos tiles. So that was fun. Um, you know when you start something and you, you think it's gonna be easy, you kind of have in the back of your head maybe I shouldn't start this but I did I ripped up the tiles took forever I knew I could have laid my um, compound on top of the asbestos tiles but when I picked up the laminate tiles and then some um, of the tiles underneath came up with it I thought all right let me rip them up too took forever so now so once that was up I cleaned off all the glue I use liters of hot water um, degreaser soap everything I scrubbed my floor a wet vac to clean it up after I got it down nice and clean then I put down some primer so this acrylic floor leveler would stick to it nicely that's when I'm spreading it out now but later on I realized the big mistake I made the whole point of a floor leveling compound is to be laid down in one go you're meant to level the whole floor equally i was not confident in my i've never done any of this stuff i've never mixed anything up not even cement so i thought let me do it small do half and half so you see me lay down the first mix by the time i get round to laying down the second mix the first mix and the second mix do not blend in together and then there is a slight lip between the two of the levels. I didn't know how bad that would translate to later on in the in the day. And now we wait. That was a struggle. I've never done this before. First of all, I didn't mix up enough. Then I had to chop off a bit of I don't know, a bit of MDF underneath my um, cabinets. Um, I ended up using one and a half bags of this and um, I splashed it all up on my walls because the way how I've been refurbishing this house, I didn't know the extent I was going to. So I thought, all right, all I need to do is just paint it. And then when I've painted it, I've realized, okay, now the floor doesn't match. So now I'm changing the floor and I'm like, if I'm gonna do the floor here, I might as well do the kitchen and one thing's led to another. So the whole house is pretty much painted, but, now I'm starting to mix things and, and I'm splashing stuff on the wall so it's, it's not good. But the worst thing about all of that, this is gonna take about two hours to dry. Over there. 
my beers are stranded over there and my phone right there so it's gonna be a little bit boring waiting for this to um, dry two hours is up and it is rock hard it feels a little bit damp like it there is a damp feeling to it but they say after two hours you can um, move on or at least walk on it so now I'm gonna lay down the insulation bolts No, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh. Alright, I want to screw up this car. Let's ask the market ah, straight the across. Kind of shit. finally finished putting down the insulation uh, I saw so many videos on Instagram when people are marking things up so nicely and they're, they're, they're doing such a good technique and I'm like oh yeah that's how you do it that must be so nice and easy to do come to me to attempt it oh my gosh I forgot everything but it, it, it's, it's done it's done now I'm gonna pick it up put down the tile adhesive to hold it down and then I can move on so what this is, is some 10 mil insulation. It's like a glass fiber material on one side, foam on the inside, and glass fiber on the other side. And I know glass fiber because I've got it all in my skin and it's stabbing me and it does not feel good right now. So this is a perfect opportunity to talk about the direction of this channel. So like I said earlier, I'm going to be doing a few more reviews. I am going to be showing off some domestic products like a jet washer. Um, if there's more house related stuff, I'll be showing off. I have a few more videos in the, in the works right now. So I, this house comes with a garage. And in the garage, I have spent a few months stocking it out as well as um, installing new electrics, sorting myself out to basically go solo. In, the, in the, the very near future, I'm looking to sell my car, 
buy myself a van and become a mobile pipe welding so-called specialist. That's the game plan right now. My garage has all, well, not all, but my garage is, is, is close to having all the gear needed to to be a home operation. So I've got my air compressor, toolbox, all my tools. I have a, a pillar drill. Um, should have a, a bench grinder soon, a welding table, all of that sort of stuff. So that will be coming in some of the future videos. What was in, involved is, is basically stripping out my garage and painting it, in, installing new lights, um, things of, of that nature. And again, like um, the direction of the channel, the garage, I used a airless spray machine to spray the garage. So I'm gonna review that. So that should be an interesting video to watch. So before installing the flooring, I'm gonna check the resistance. 200 ohms. There we go. They say there's a 10% tolerance. So good. So I'm gonna locate my um, thermostat in a 35 by 35 gang box and I'm gonna stick it in the wall right here. So that means I'm gonna have to um, cut into the wall. And this sounds pretty hollow, so that should be easy to do. I need to work out the cable spacing. So I'm gonna quickly measure my floor and then um, do this formula to work out how close the cable has to go next to each other. square meter ridge of usable floor space for this underfloor heating. So it's calculated by room size divided by the cable length. So I know I have 92 meters of cable length divided by 92 meters, which is 0.6. It looks like I would have 165 watts per square meter of heat output at a 600, at a 60 mil spacing. Now for my European guys, you know about Lidl and Aldi. This guy here was a little 24 pound laser level in the middle aisle of Lidl and Aldi. Now I'm sure I could have got a better one from uh, maybe DeWalt, but this guy here for 24 pound for having one rather than not having one, I don't mind even if I have to replace this, this should get me out of trouble. Now I'm gonna use this to mark the boundaries of the room. They say it should be 50 mil from any of these cabinets appliances. So I'm gonna do some kind of border around it and then I'm gonna split it up and then start marking six mil apart. So the layout is done. I was able to stretch it across the whole of the kitchen. Underneath here, I started to run out of space. So um, I kind of went up underneath what would be, I think if a washing machine over there, which I didn't want to do, but I was running out of space. Um, over here, there's nothing because the fridge is going there. And this here is where it stops. So I started off quite wide. <coughs> And then I realized I had way too much of it by the end. So half of it I had to um, pick up and relay a little bit tighter to get a few more runs in. And then eventually I realized now it's too short. So that's why I kind of stretched this out in a weird way. Once it's done, I'm gonna have to tape up 
all of the seams all the way across around the whole thing and then I'm going to pour some more floor level and compound on top of it because I'm not confident enough to to trowel over this with the tile adhesive and lay the tiles on top of it a bit of floor adhesive a bit of floor leveler will um, protect these wires and then here's the start I dug out a channel and then I'm running this up all the way through here um, 35 by 35 mil box is going in here oops I was gonna run power from down here but up here I realized there's a junction box in here which isn't good I know we shouldn't have that but I'm gonna use it and splice off and get my power from right there after taping up as much as I can um, I run out of tape and I, I don't even think I've done half of it It's time to find the centre of the flooring so I can start my tiling. From the back wall to the front and then find the centre. So I'm going to work out the equal measurement between these two surfaces so the tiles are nicely laid down in the middle. My um, On this side it could be perfectly laid out on that half, but then that could mean that my center joint could be running in a weird angle in relation to this. So I think it'll be more important to have this square here looking good, and this gap, and that side over there where the fridge is going is going to be hidden. Up pretty good, 662. 662. 662. Without a string line, I'm finding it a little bit difficult to uh, mark these things out. I don't even have a level as a straight edge for this, which I think is a bad thing. I probably should have a level. There's one line going across and then the other line, and I can lay the tiles in each quadrant of this and then work my, and then work my way out and then it should look nice. So it's been a few days since I um, started this, it's fully dry and I've learned a lot of things along the way. First of all, I've learned, wow this is difficult, so much more difficult than I anticipated. When you think about tiling, you do your research, you watch the videos, you see them lay it, you get a rough idea of how it's done, but only until you lay the first slab down do you realise how difficult it is. How do I get all of these levels? How much water do I put down? I've learned a few things along the way. First of all, uh, I ran out of underfloor leveling stuff. I should have went out and bought more and protected all of the cables. So when I'm using my trowel, I could be a lot more rough. Because I've got wires underneath, I'm, I'm being gentle trying to um, trowel the, the mortar without damaging the cables that are still exposed. So that meant that sometimes I had a bit too much more, not enough more, and it was just, I had to be a lot more delicate with it. Some of my other issues were 
like an idiot, I didn't clean up all of the mortar from when I finished to now when I'm about to begin. So I've got mortar that's above tile height, that is rock hard, that I'm going to have to scrape off somehow. Um, I feel more confident the second time going around to doing it, but at the same time if the budget permitted, I would have had someone else do this instead. It is difficult. Props to the tilers. But now I've done the bulk of the stuff, now I need to move on to um, cutting in the edges, which is going to be... Let's see how it's going to turn out. So I was getting on nicely tiling up these pieces and cutting them to shape and then I have just had the electricians here and basically because my house is so old built in the 1980s I have the old school electricity so that means I cannot so that means my original plan with having this plug socket powering the underfloor heating cannot work because this underfloor heating will overwhelm this plug socket which is connected to all of the kitchen utensils and everything so the fridge the washing machine tumble dryer all of it will be drawing from the same 13 amp from the same i think 32 amp fuse at the front door so basically i need a designated cable for this on its own which means i need to cut grooves in my flooring to go to my um, fuse box, which I'm getting changed over to an RCD protected fuse box to make it compatible with the underfloor heating. So the electrician done all the checks and um, so far all seems good that I can change it over with no issues. So now I'm gonna cut a groove in it all the way through there, across the floor here into there. So the next issue is my garage. So I'm gonna have welding equipment in there and they draw too much power. And um, so far it's only connected to this through an extension lead going all the way around the garden, up the back and across. So I need to then again have this on its own RCD protected line. So I need to cut another groove in the flooring all the way to the junction box so I can have the correct power. Because we've all been there, when you're using a 240 volt welding machine on a 13 amp fuse, it always trips and you can never go to full power. So it's gonna be on its own line with its own fuse and then that way there, it can run full power, not a problem without tripping it out. But that means I need to use my new tools to cut some grooves in the flooring. So at this point here, same with the kitchen tiles, I have not realized that these are asbestos tiles. I only found out when I was sending some of these videos over to my brother and also put in you know, some of these videos on my Instagram that people told me it's asbestos. Um, I don't know what to say. If I've been exposed now, I've been exposed. Um, the most I can do is if you see me there eye protection breathing protection and um, ear protection I try to always be safe Whenever I'm doing anything anyway, so I just hope that um, The exposure was little I just hope that these tiles aren't the dangerous type You know I've done a bit of research to find out um, how bad the tiles actually are and they're saying that because it's in a resin and it's not kind of turning too much into dust it's okay the dust for the most part was coming away from was coming out of the concrete and um, this that and these tiles was kind of tarry and it was turning into a um, like it was melting almost so in in that sense there I, I hope um, I weren't too exposed. The whole house upstairs was, was shut off. Um, everything downstairs is all construction stuff. So it's been thrown away or cleared up. 
but let's see. If you've ever done any form of construction, you realize how close you are all the time for making catastrophic mistakes. And right here, when I tell you my thing was puckering, I had cut into the wall, not realizing on the other side of that wall is my main gas inlet into the house. Somehow, I was able to cut two perfect channels either side of the 32 mil um, low carbon steel gas main going in but them um, diagonal plunge cuts that I done nicked the surface of, of the, the pipe ever so slightly and when I tell you my heart was pumping the worried look on my face I just stopped the camera straight away and I had to just rip it all out to make sure that there was no damage or at least there was no further damage or, or a gas leak so I have been a busy boy these last few weeks. Now I'm moving on to the front room. The kitchen is done. The tiling's done. The grouting's done. I even managed to um, bring my washing machine in as well as my fridge. So I'm waiting to buy a tumble dryer. But as for here, and also even a new boiler. So, yes, there's been a lot of work going on behind the scenes. The plumber will be back to sort this out though. He royally butchered this roughness and all sorts. I've got weeping joints underneath and everything. So tomorrow he will be back to just finish that off. So I was unsure if I should include this content in my videos this is you know the issues that I've been having behind the scenes and I was in two minds whether it should be brought forward but I realized I've actually got a little bit of influence thanks to you guys so yeah F it let me put it inside this video put some pressure on these people so this here is the result of my four thousand pound boiler install I was upgrading my boiler to a, um, a combi boiler because the the one in my house was like 20, 40, 30 years old, some silly, something old like that. Old radiators, everything. So I, um, I got a. Um, there was an ad on Instagram. It was a a company called B Shaw, and they basically sold me a dream. Four installers come down to my house, knock it out, do such a good job. And what transpired from that? it was it sounded good at the start but basically one man came down to my house named david and he screwed up my house so bad the guy was in such a rush he he wanted to be off of that job and he was going to do anything to get it sorted and yeah he, he screwed it up and the worst thing is i feel like a a, a punk because we was talking and I, I kind of was hearing some of his stories and stuff like that and I could kind of relate to the certain things that he was going through so that's why I kind of I, I felt bad even complaining about this guy later on because I'm a, I'm a worker too I don't want the guy fired I don't want him to get lose his job or get in trouble but what I realized that mindset allowed him to walk over me and do a poor job so you just see the water damage flooded my kitchen the day after a solder joint underneath was weeping I, I wouldn't even say weeping it was it was flooded as he it, all in all about five solder joints or fitting joints on this whole job has been leaking or weeping here's underneath the guy left the the, the whole kitchen condition terribly he was not straight his his clips weren't in properly um, he damaged all my painted walls his soldering was terrible he had he didn't clean up after himself and worst of all this is the, the the icing on the cake he cut himself somehow while doing the install and instead of 
realizing that blood is is a biohazard let me take care of it he touched every single one of my ra radiators and got blood in every single one of my rooms on my carpet on the walls on the radiators on the copper joints on the floor he didn't clean up after himself everything he just really even even i, I upgraded my radiators from a single um finned radiator to a double one so they're they're further out of the wall and you would expect them to to put a nice 45 set in the copper not this guy he just yanked the the, the thermostatic radiator valves and put them on at such a, a a a wonky angle that it's not straight it's the whole job was done terribly and even now i'm still in talks with the people every time i i email or i remember to complain about this this install they like they want the whole information again fresh and i'm dealing with people over and over again so this video here hopefully once it's published i'm going to send them this video so they can just see everything that i'm dealing with i'm sick of speaking to new people every single time so this install happened around december and we're in april now yet to be resolved still have leaking joints and I've, I've even got blood the guy came back to clean blood and he done such a, a poor job at cleaning the blood that i don't want him back in my house again now i don't recommend the b shore group one little bit to install a boiler so all good things fridge is in now i'm waiting for the electrician to um sort out this i've got my um i have my cables cut into the ground running along so this one here so this one here is for my um, underfloor heating and this one here is for my welding garage running all the way along here and it's going to terminate up in there Now the job in hand now is laying the wooden flooring. So I have this here is a vapor barrier underlay. I never knew I needed it. I just bought this um, wooden type, cardboard type underlay. But now I've got a vapor barrier and that and the wooden flooring should help to build up the layers for this transition because the insulation, the floor level are the more uh, all of that sort of stuff made this grow. I don't know about 25, 30 mil, which is pretty huge, all things considered. So much so that I almost couldn't get the washing machine in. I um, I had to take the legs off, and um, yeah, it's, it literally could not get any lower than this. I'm ready to start laying now so I've got all of the underlay and stuff put down apart from this corner over here I'm letting um, I'm letting this stuff dry you know it's just a big hole so I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna start from this corner working my way through I wanted to do three perfect rows going to full length but I think that might be too much work so I'm just gonna start in this corner and work out so all this tape you see on the floor, I have so much of it um, left over. So I thought if I tape it up, 
I ain't gonna kick it out of the way, I ain't gonna make any of it overlap each other and it will use the tape for a good purpose and it will make it easier for me laying the floor in the first place. So this video is wrapping up. This has definitely been a huge undertaking filming all of this content for as long as I've been filming it for. This is about four months worth of content. This here is only part one. Part one is just my house and this is only a snippet of what's done to the house. I've also installed new lighting, new lighting fixtures, new plug sockets, skirting boards, I put handrails up, um, curtain rails, what else have I done? Some of the furniture has been installed. There is a huge undertaking that I need to do at some point which is still collecting my 700 and something litre fish tank from my um, dad's house and I need to bring it over to this house and set it up and I also have to build a feature wall around the fish tank I don't know when I'm gonna get around to doing that but be sure I will film it so yes I am a welding channel but I'm also a content creator I also like to create content for use lot if this here if you've not gotten this far then clearly this video isn't for you if you're listening to this at the end you are the type of person I'm filming this for I'm glad you've stuck around for as long as you have I'm glad you enjoyed it I am happy I can share my life with you lot in a way because that's what this is I'm, I'm bringing you lot into my house so I'm glad I can share that with you lot and that you lot find it entertaining at least this here is part one part two will be me moving on to my garage so the house side you're probably not going to see any more house videos I am still moving in all these months later so part two will be setting up the electrics in my garage spraying the garage and setting up my welding workshop in the garage so once that's done it will be out and um, yeah with that being said thank you very much for sticking around for this long thanks for watching and i will see you a lot in the next video